We've seen a lot of protests in cities all over the U.S. over the past couple of weeks. Those protests have been fascinating to me because some of them have already been effective. The uprising in Minneapolis burned down the police station and now the city council are actually considering eliminating the police. But so far they're just words from politicians, so you know we don't know what will happen there yet. The thing about the news is sometimes it focuses on the wrong thing. And sometimes that's deliberate. It's possible if you've been watching the news, you've seen all stuff all about the uprising, but you've missed the real story underneath it. The real story is what happens to a city when the police are kicked out. I'm Chris, and this is what had to be said. I recently made a series of videos explaining why it's usually better to just leave humans alone to figure things out for themselves than to, you know, better than to rule them and direct them and force them to do what you think they should do. Well, I was proven correct over the past couple of weeks. We've seen multiple spontaneous popular uprisings with no clear leader or organizational structure. And that you probably know already, especially since I've been talking about it for the past week. But what's been happening behind the cameras is just as illustrative of spontaneous order. The main thing is mutual aid. Now, if you don't know what mutual aid is, it's really just when people provide what others need, you know, maybe to everybody, without expecting payment. It's not the same as charity. Charity's top-down, whereas mutual aid aims to kind of bring everyone up and make them equal. Mutual aid is common in a crisis. It's normal. People bring each other food, clothes, whatever they need. They help rebuild houses after a disaster, or at least house you until your house is rebuilt. They set up community gardens and libraries, and so on. Mutual aid is essential during a popular revolt because people on the front lines don't have time to just stop and look for food and medical supplies. So presumably there's a lot of it going on, right? Yep. Let's see, shall we? Let's take a look at some of these headlines. Mutual aid grows in popularity during protests and pandemic. Uh -huh. Mutual aid groups distribute food donations during protests. Mutual aid supports protests with food, face masks. Then there's this article, Propaganda and Mutual Aid in the Time of COVID-19. Great article, worth a read. So feel free to check out any of those links you'll probably see roughly the same things. You know, people banding together to help each other during a crisis. So you could check out this website, NYC United Against Coronavirus Resources and Information. Check out some of the things that they do. Jump to a section. What does it do? Relief funds, food insecurity, housing, utilities, disability, medical needs, mental health, child care, pet care, legal support, etc., etc. But, you know, mutual aid doesn't get covered by corporate media because, well, it's not a corporate practice. It makes people realize they don't need money, just cooperation. In some parts of the U.S., businesses destroy food because it can't be sold. Because to a capitalist, if it isn't commodified and sold at a profit, it shouldn't exist. So it's good people know you don't have to sell things. You could just make them available to everyone. And that's what mutual aid is. To really secede from the capitalist system, they'll need to make these systems of mutual aid permanent. But a lot of them are. In many cases, the people handing out food or what have you are part of a permanent mutual aid organization. Maybe they just needed more volunteers or more awareness. 
police have been destroying mutual aid stations at protests because they know it's how the people sustain their show of power in the streets. Those cities who've kicked the police out of public space don't have the same problems. In fact, where the police have been removed, or at least cowed into submission, there's been dancing in the streets. And that's what I find most interesting. In Oakland in particular, thousands of people, I mean, I don't know, I wasn't there, lots of people defied curfew to hold a hour, an hours-long dance party. You can read about Northampton, Massachusetts. Probably not a very big place, but same thing. In Northampton, where thousands gathered to po- protest police brutality, officers back away, and the event turns into a street party. Thousands of people forced police to leave the streets, and then they took part in a dance party. And it's been the same in D.C., as you can see here. Again, not not unpredictable. It's actually pretty easy to explain. Dancing is a celebration of life and freedom. The two things police try to take from you. So the people in the streets have shown us everything I've been talking about on this channel. Spontaneous demonstrations of popular power, mutual aid, freedom, and joy. And the only people hurting them are the people who want to continue to wield power over them. Don't give them that chance. Take back all public space from the state. Thank you.